Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today, we'll be recapping our recent learnings. In our previous sessions, we set up a lab environment for Android mobile penetration testing and reverse engineering. We covered the installation of Android Studio and setting up an Android virtual device, LVD. We also introduced tools like APK Tool, Dex2Jar, JDGUI, and Dozer, which are valuable for future Android penetration testing and reverse engineering endeavors. In those previous videos, I haven't covered the process of setting them up in a Linux environment, and I've also not discussed the common challenges that arise with Android virtual devices, AVDs. Android Studio demands a dedicated graphics card for smooth AVD operation, implying the need for high-end hardware to ensure seamless performance. However, the main emphasis of this video is directed towards crafting a lab environment that caters to the capabilities of low-end devices. This configuration holds significant importance for engaging in activities such as Android app penetration testing and reverse engineering. To begin, we'll initiate the process of setting up an Android virtual device within a virtual machine. While there are various Android ISO images available for manual installation, you won't need to follow those steps. You can conveniently download the required files from the link I've provided in my blog. Here, on my screen, you'll notice an android.ova file. This particular file can be directly configured and launched without encountering any complications. Once you've got it, fire up VirtualBox. Click File and select Import Appliance. Import the downloaded OVA file. Locate the file on your computer, then click Next. Review the settings or customize them as needed. Hit Finish to begin the import process. After the import is done, you'll spot the Android Virtual Machine in the VirtualBox Manager. Choose it and click on Settings and switch the network adapter to Host Only Adapter. With that done, we're ready to kickstart the VM. Android is up and running. You can now use the Android VM just like you would on an actual Android phone. It's a great alternative to the Android emulator. To access the Android VM, we'll be using Kali Linux. If you're not familiar with Kali Linux, take a look at my article on the blog. Alright, Kali Linux is good to go. First, we need the IP address of the Android VM. Run sudo netdiscover-ieth1. The result shows the IP address is 192.168.95.118. Now that we have the IP address, we need the port ID to connect via ADB. Let's scan the network using Nmap. Upon scanning, we'll spot an open port that we need. This running server is ADB, which facilitates communication between different network services over a network. If you've watched this video, you have a basic understanding of ADB installation on Windows. If not, make sure to catch up. ADB doesn't come pre-installed on Kali Linux, so we have to install it. To install it, run sudo apt-get install ADB. With the installation completed, we're all set to establish a connection with the Android Virtual Machine. To connect to the Android Virtual Machine, employ the command ADB Connect, making sure to input the IP of the Android VM, followed by specifying the open port. Sorry, we have to add semicolon in between the IP and port. Once connected, run ADB Devices to list the devices connected to the workstation. For a list of basic ADB commands and their usage, check out my blog. For showcasing the Android VM, we'll utilize SCRCPY. If you followed along with this video, you're already familiar with how we've set up SCRCPY on Windows. Similar to ADB, SCRCPY isn't included by default in Kali Linux.
After conducting a Google search, I came across the official documentation provided by Genemotion's GitHub page. As I scrolled down, I discovered the installation steps tailored for Linux. Here, it provided the installation step using the package manager. I attempted to execute the provided command but encountered an unable to locate package error, indicating that it didn't work as intended. To overcome this, I decided to proceed with the manual installation steps. Referring to the installation instructions on SCRCPY's GitHub repository, I started by installing the necessary packages. I copied the provided code and pasted it into the terminal. Following which, respond with Y to continue. Once the necessary packages are installed, copy the second command and paste it on the terminal. This command will clone the repository and execute the installation script automatically. This phase required some time to complete. Upon a successful installation, we are now prepared to run SCRCPY, enabling to display and control of an Android virtual machine on the computer screen. To verify its functionality, execute the SCRCPY command and observe its behavior. There are certain essential applications missing from the Kali Linux distribution, such as the Android SDK tools, which encompass the Android build tools. While ADB is often associated with platform tools, but SDK tools play a crucial role in manual Android application and DX file creation. To install the Android SDK on Kali Linux, first, we have to update the repository using the command sudo apt-get update. After this, proceed to install the SDK manager. You can achieve this by running sudo apt-get install SDK manager. Once SDK Manager is successfully installed, the next step involves downloading platform tools and build tools onto Kali Linux. Execute the command sudo SDK Manager Platform Tools Build Tools 30.0.3 Platform Android 30. This will facilitate the automatic download of platform tools and build tools with the target platform set to version 30. You have the flexibility to adjust the targeted platform value according to your preferences. Once the installation is complete, you can easily identify the storage location of the build tools. To verify the successful installation of these build tools, simply check the designated installation directory. Within this directory, you'll discover a comprehensive assortment of invaluable tools that play a pivotal role throughout the entire Android APK building process. An important point to keep in mind is that Java plays a significant role in Android app reverse engineering. While Kali Linux does come with Java pre-installed, it's worth noting that the latest version of Java might not function optimally with various Android build applications. As a result, it becomes necessary to downgrade Java to an earlier version. In my case, I've chosen to work with JDK 8 for this purpose. During my attempt to install JDK 8 using the command sudo apt install open JDK 8 JDK, I encountered an error stating unable to locate package. To address this issue, I'll guide you through the manual installation of JDK 8. You can apply similar steps to install other versions as well. Open your preferred web browser and navigate to this URL. This web page will offer access to the installation and archive files for JDK 8. We'll specifically target the Linux version for installation. However, you'll notice various architecture options available. To determine your system's architecture, execute the command you name a in your terminal. Upon checking the result, I discovered that my system employs the x86-64 architecture. Consequently, I will download the x64 archive file. 
After completing the download, the next step is to prepare for the installation of JDK 8. Navigate to the directory where the download is located. Once there, extract the downloaded file. After extraction, rename the folder to JDK8. To proceed, move this renamed folder to the user slash lib slash JVM directory. Open a new terminal and change the directory to download directory. Execute the MV command to relocate the folder to its new destination. Now, let's execute the following command. This command instructs the system to add a new alternative for the Java executable. It designates the new alternative's location as the path to the Java executable, Java, file within the JDK 8 installation directory and assigns it a priority of 1. This means that if other alternatives for the Java command exist, the system will give preference to the one specified in this command with a priority value of 1. This approach proves valuable for managing multiple versions of a program and seamlessly switching between them. Similarly, we proceed to add new alternatives for other executables. Replace the word Java with Java C to add a new alternative for the Java compiler. Now, again repeat the process for the jar command. Having successfully installed Java 8, the next step is to configure it as the default Java runtime environment, JRE, interactively. This configuration is especially handy when dealing with multiple installed Java versions, and you wish to designate one as the default. To achieve this, enter this command in the terminal. This command prompts the system to present you with two alternative options for Java. You'll need to choose the number corresponding to the location of JDK 8 and press enter. By following this step, you'll effectively update Kali Linux to use Java 8. In case you wish to revert to the previous Java version, simply execute a similar command and select the desired alternative. These steps provide a robust mechanism for managing different Java versions of your system. However, the Java compiler has not yet been updated to version 8 yet. To achieve this, run the same command as before, but replace Java with Java C. Then select the alternative Java C option when prompted. Likewise, proceed to update the path for the jar file. After implementing these adjustments, you can confirm their effect by verifying the version. These insights constitute supplementary information I've shared in this video, which holds significant value for testing Android applications in the context of penetration testing and reverse engineering. If you have any uncertainties or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below.